We will reconvene the meeting. Sorry. No worries. All right, it's 11 past 11. So next up, counselors, we have Hamilton Christian School. Thank you very much for all the time and effort you all put into putting together your submission. So as I understand it, we've got four groups, just giving the counselors a bit of the lay of the land here. We've got four groups. In turn, they will cover biodiversity, transport, Waikato screen, and Tawaka. So uh, we do have five minutes on the screen, so just keep an eye on that, and that'll show you when your, your time is coming to an end. Really would love the opportunity for counselors to be able to ask questions, though, so keep, uh, keep that in mind, all right? Okay, over to you. Kia ora. My name is Lisa Brown. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. As the next generation, we appreciate the leadership that the counselors and staff provide for our community. We are here today to support an increase in the natural heritage rate and to help sustain biodiversity in our region. The Waikato is one of the regions with the greatest indigenous biodiversity loss in New Zealand. Some of the main threats to our environment include invasive species like possums, stoats and rats, which destroy native bird life and habitats. Certain wild animals like goats, deers, pigs and tar eat and damage native plants, ruining our vulnerable land. Climate change is another challenging issue. Extreme weather events are becoming more frequent and severe and is ultimately damaging our ecosystems. All these environmental stresses indicate that we should focus on finding solutions to protect our environment and raise people's awareness of how their daily actions can negatively affect the environment. Protecting our whenua requires time, effort and funds. Various voluntary community groups are working hard to protect our native plants and animals. We believe that by increasing the natural heritage rate to $8.68 per property, will enable the council to provide more funding to these community groups so that they can carry on protecting and restoring our ecosystems. As author Franz Lanting once said, biodiversity starts in the distant past and it points towards the future. Thank you. We'd now like to invite questions. Thank you for that. Councillors, we have a question. Surely, surely, Councillor Clarkson. Bruce Clarkson, our Deputy Chair. Yeah, uh, look, it's great to see you guys and um, some of you I've met the other day. Um, I'm interested in why you chose the $8. And I did notice in your submission there was a bit of a debate going on in your document about which one of the options you might select. So do you want to try and give us some more information about that? <laughs> um, well, your website states that um, the um, well, your website says that the um, like how you guys so oh my God. You got it. Um, well, your website states that this hasn't actually kept pace. So we believe that by increasing it, yeah. um, it will not only like help our environment, but ultimately it will just make it better. Yeah. Okay. I would also like to add on, a little goes a long way for our um, environment. So that's like, if, if we invest now, it won't become a problem in the future, if you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like a weed. If you don't take it out now, then it's going to grow bigger and bigger. So yeah. Yeah. No, thank you thank for that. You. Um, you've you've done well. You've 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 given us some justification for why you made your choice, and that's a really good thing to do when you present a submission like this. I uh, really appreciate that you've come in and spent all that time doing the preparation. Thank you very much. Councillor Nickel. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait a minute. What's my order here? Sorry. Oh, I've got Councillor Nickel, then Councillor Cookson. Councillor Nickel. Hi, thanks for that. Um, 
all of you. I was just wondering if you know of any uh, community groups that are working nearby your school or where you live um, that that might apply for this funding or that you've been involved with. Just anything like that. I don't exactly, sorry, I'm quite tall. I don't exactly know <laughs> the specific names of these groups, hmm. but I there was, you know, I can't pronounce the Maori name, but the council is, I'm pretty sure, is working with this or have worked with um, these people, sorry, I can't pronounce the name, yeah. and they were working um, to plant more um, trees and things. Yes. I can't remember exactly where, but yeah, um, I do know that the council is involved in a lot of Yeah. No, I encourage like you to that. get involved if you can. It's really fun to do and meet lots of new people. Councillor Cookson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just the, your, the way you answered that question before was really practical and um, everybody in the room could totally understand when you said that if um, you, you let a weed grow, it's going to get bigger. So well done. That was a very good answer. Thank you for that. Cheers. Councillor Nebone, did you want to? Oh, look, I, I don't know exactly where your school is, but I was just curious if you had any little projects going on at your school as well, in terms of biodiversity and pest control. Next term, there is um, this program that's going where we're going to go on trips and plant trees everywhere. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know the chair. Mm. Very good. Well done. Well um, presented. Thank you very much. All right. I think we, we now have our next group from the school and they will be talking about transport. Just to test that it's working, I think you can bring it nice and close to you. Yep. Yeah. Testing. Testing. Yep. There we go. Do you want to just introduce yourselves and we'll just make sure everybody can hear you with those microphones? Hello. Testing. Yep. <laughs> you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? The those who have who've taken the, the mics, you want to introduce yourselves? Oh, I'm Sophie. I'm Kirik. And I'm Zuri. All right, go ahead. Firstly, we would like to thank all the councillors and staff for everything you have done for our Waikato community. We appreciate your hard work and hope you can take our feedback into consideration. Buses. Buses are important to many people, especially youth who don't have a car and, it, and to disabled people. Some people live in countryside areas, so they don't have access to buses as there are no bus stops in those areas. They'll have to travel a long distance to find a bus stop. So we would love to have love to have more bus stops in those areas and buses frequently being increased. Trains. We think we, uh, we recently went on a ride on the Tehuia train. We think that the following would make it more popular. Some touchscreen TVs like they have on planes and a couple of TVs in the corners of the carriages with speakers, telling the history of the train and the towns that it goes through would be educational. Just imagine how many more passengers would be interested. In conclusion, we're grateful for what you have done, but we would like our voice to be heard and that you can take our ideas into consideration because we are the next generation. Thank you so much for your time and attention. You'll now accept your questions. All right, councillors. We've got, oh, sorry, we need to, yeah, we'll take, there we go. We've got this mic on, okay? It's all good. Right. So we've got Councillor Smith and then Councillor Strange. Councillor Smith. Thank you. It's uh, wonderful to see young people taking an interest in their future. So thank you all for coming in. Um, I'm interested to see that you support the council rating for public transport and, and you've selected option one. Do you, I'd just like to get an understanding. Of, do you appreciate what that might mean for some people? For example, some residents under the current proposal could be paying 11 times more 
from $50 to $500 for that service if it was to be approved in the current form. Do you think that's fair? Personally, don't think it's fair because some people don't technically use transport, and so it's unfair for the other people to pay. So, do you, so you haven't really said a lot in your submission. So, how do you think the council would be better served in rating for who should pay for public transport? Should everybody pay, or should just selected few pay? That. I think everybody should pay a little bit and then it's available for everybody and not certain people have to pay for other people's transport. Thank you very much. Great, great response. Councillor Strange. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, appreciate all the time that you've put into researching and um, your field trips as well. Um, yeah, and I really like the way that you answered that <laughs> very technical question um, just before me. Um, so yeah, well done. Um, I know that you you have given a lot of thought um, into not just thinking about yourselves through your submission, but future you as well. So um, yeah, thank you for that. My question would be, um, given that, you are in Hamilton, and some of you come from outside of Hamilton as well to attend school. Um, and just following along with the regional rating for public transport, um, how would we make it fairer in how we charge? So you've sort of answered that already. Sorry, I'm thinking on my feet. Um, Yeah, I, I won't have a question actually. I'd like to hear a little bit more about your thoughts around rail and around the Tahuya. You said you, you got to experience the Tahuya. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that was like? What you what you thought worked well? Um, well, in my opinion, it was it was fun. It was nice. I enjoyed the ride. But like we said in our submission, there are a few things that could make it more enjoyable mm -hmm. so more people would want to go on it. Nice. So that kids can, like, have something to do while they're on the mm -hmm. train, not just sit down and just, yeah. Nice. Nice. Councillor Nibon. Do you think we should have more bike racks on the trains? should have more bike um, racks for them because some people have like bike to trains and they need more space for them. Great. Well done. Oh, sorry. I've got Councillor Cookson. So the interaction stuff you'd like to have in your, in your, you'd be more like air travel where it's in the, the, the headrest in front of you. Is that what you'd be after or? Thank you. Yeah, something like that, similar. Great. Thank you very much. Well done. Very much appreciated. All right, we've got our next group who will be speaking to us about Waikato screens. Red light on, it means your microphone is on. Hello, my name is Roland. My name is Faith. My name is Malika. I wonder if the two in the center can share and then we move one over. Okay. Thank you, Council, staff, and Madam Chair, for giving us some of your time to put our words into consideration about Waikato Screen. 
Supporting Waikato Screen benefits economic growth and development of New Zealand. Waikato Screen brings actors and crew to our amazing community. Film sets are a form of community. They bring people together with a shared vision. Oh, sorry. Not only do we need to show that New Zealand is beautiful, we need to show the world that New Zealand is here. Waikato Screen shows advertisers New Zealand's local shops by association with films. This brings money into our local community. We would like to invite questions. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Councillor Marr. Yeah, thank, thank you guys for your input. You're sure you don't just support it because Jason Momoa came to town? No. <laughs> Um, but just picking up on your point, young man, um, do, you, do you believe that having that that facility uh, in the Waikato region, it actually does show our region to the rest of the world? Yes, I think so. People might not come immediately, but it will come eventually, and they might think it's a cool thing to see. Thank you. Great answer. To add on to his... Um, um, Concision. I would like to add that if we are able to bring more money in, we will be able to see more people and tourism come in because it has decreased by a lot internationally, but we can help bring it up for New Zealand. Nice. Nice. Can you think of some examples of where that's happened already? like to say the Hobbit, when we were able to produce the Hobbit, we saw a lot of tours that come in, not just for the movie, to come in for the sets and the stages. Um, I would also like to point out with Erica, they don't just involve people to come for the stages, they involve to come for theme parks and everything about it. It's not just about the movie, it's about what we can bring in for it. Thank you. Fantastic answer. Answer. Uh, Councillor Nickel. Uh, do any of you have... Um, family or friends that work in the screen industry and the films or or what Wakato Screens kind of works with or or classmates that have been there. Um, yeah, have you, because obviously Wakato Screens um, uh, looks to build that industry. So even if there are any budding actors amongst you, feel free to just mention. <laughs> um, so my dad is the principal of the school. Mm -hmm. And he, so he's come here like once or twice, but not really much apart, but yeah. Anyone else? Uh, but no, we don't have any family or friends that work in the interest in industry of white cut screens. That's it, thanks. Any other questions? No? If not, M oh. Mitchie, I'd just like to thank yes. um, this group. They had no notes. And they presented, you know, just um, everything straight from, you know, their heart and, then, and from their heads. So thank you very much for coming along and presenting to us today. I know it yeah. takes a lot of courage, even for an adult to get up and present, let alone um, your young, young, younger generation to do it. So thanks very much. Thanks. What well and I, I'll just uh, let you know we've got Councillor Mahuta online who's watching, and she says, "Well done to all presenters. Our Waikato future looks bright." <laughs> oh, and she, there she is on the screen. Thumbs up, <laughs> Kia ora tupa. Thank you very much to the group. Appreciate that uh, presentation on Waikato screens. All right, I think we have our last group ready to go. Oh, sorry. Oh, was there something else? Was there a closing comment somebody wanted to make? Go ahead. I'd just like to quickly ask, and what is your plan for why cuddle screen for the near future? Well, all of those things are what we're discussing over these these few days where we're hearing uh, submissions from people to accompany that big pile of submissions on the table right here. See that? That's all the feedback we've gotten from our, our regional community on the various proposals we've put forward in our long-term plan. And then later this month, uh, in the last week, we'll be meeting for a, a series of days, and that's where we de deliberate and we debate the different the pros and cons of different proposals, and we'll make our decisions in, in that time, all right? Kia ora.
I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, kia ora, my name is uh, Kieran. Um, hello, my name is Kian Sondiger. And before we start, we would like to thank you for your work here at the Waikato Regional Council. And we would simply just like to help you and give you some tips to continue to help the Waikato, the Waikato economy via Te Waka. We would also like to say that this is our personal view. Anyway, here are some ways you can help the Waikato, the Waikato's economy via Te Waka. When you better fund Te Waka, you help the economy and help us get out of economic recession. We have met with the CEO of Te Waka and have learnt their intentions and proposals and we believe in a continuation of their funding and possibly an increase in their funding. Te Waka oh. will boost the economy by helping small start businesses thrive and become bigger, increasing gross domestic product, helping New Zealand's economy. Granting Te Waka money to fund economic growth for the future generations will secure New Zealand's economy to the next generation. Te Waka is an econ economic development agency that helps to guide and shepherd small businesses in their starting years. The total GDP of the Waikato is only $29.2 billion, with Ontario being a large contender putting $14 billion into our economy. Te Waka plans to improve the balance of businesses in the Waikato region and increase our GDP. We need to waka. We no longer have the time nor funds. We must act fast. One in two children now live in a low income house. That's 12.6% of children. If we don't change our ways, if we don't improve, it will get worse. We need a strong economy for the, for, for the future of the Waikato region. We would like to involve ourselves in our futures, our needs. We can make a, a change, but we need your funding. We need your help. Te Waka can only do so much with the funding. We are open to questions and proposals. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Councillors, any questions? Oh, Councillor Nibon. Do you think do you think we should ask our prime minister for a bit of funding to contribute to Te Waka as well? Um, I do actually think that it could be good to get the government's money, the central New Zealand government's money into te, into funding in Te Waka. I do think that. Yeah, that'd be great. Councillor Dunbar Smith. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, the whole of the school uh, proposal has been great at the end of your you've given us a written submission as well as your verbal one and at the end of it you say our group would very much like to further involve ourselves in regional and central government affairs my question is have you because you're referring to tuna have you spoken to the hamilton city council have you made a submission and is this an ongoing democracy project you're following um we were trying to um we were trying we were trying to do that, but um, the submissions ended before we could. Well, it's great to see, and it's very good uh, way of learning about democracy in action. So thank you very much, and thank you to the teachers who've supported this process, and um, I'm sure it's been a great learning experience. Thank you. Before we end off, we would we'll like to thank the councils for giving us this amazing opportunity, and the staff members for helping us and tuning into our little speech. We all like to end up in a prayer. Close your eyes and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to talk to the council. I pray that we'll have a great rest of the day and a great night rest. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much. Really appreciate all the time and the energy that you put into not only putting together your written submissions, but also in coming uh, to present to us today. It is always uh, uh, you get a, a richer sense of the intent behind the words when we actually get to see you deliver them and and have the opportunity to ask additional questions. So we appreciate your in, your involvement in this process. We appreciate your interest and and we look forward to that ongoing engagement. Thank you very much for your time today. Kia ora. Well done, Leah. Thank you so much for how you orchestrated all of that and got um, uh, those classrooms in and out and able to present their submissions. Thank you very much for that, Leah. All right. So I believe we've got. All right, so we'll move to our, our next submission, and that is uh, Waikato Pacific Business. Am I, am I ahead of time? Sorry, are you, are you ready to come forward? All good? That's fantastic. All right, counselors, uh, this is on page 396 of your agendas. We've allowed for uh, 10 minutes for your submission. You'll see the clock on the screen at nine minutes will ring a bell. Uh, and and if you would like to ensure there's time for counselors to ask questions or points of clarification, I just ask that you allow for that within that 10 minutes. All right, over to you. And uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. To I'll just get you to bring that that microphone just a little bit closer. There we go. That way people online can hear as well. Uh, hi, my, oh, hi. Uh, my name is Saria. I just um, want to uh, thank, say thanks to um, WRC for giving us the opportunity to um, have our verbal submission. Um, so uh, I come here with our chairperson, uh, Rachel Apiaki, um, to support Te Waka. Um, and yeah, just... Uh, I'll give this to opportunity for Rachel to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rachel. Warm Pacific greetings. Uh, Malo Lele and um, Kiarana and Morina. It's wonderful to be here with Saria and we're here on behalf of our board and also um, the members of the Waikato Pacific Business Network. And we're also here also as a member of the uh, Tiwaka um, Economic Development Hub which we have been a part of for the last two years. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your um, LTP plan that has come out and of interest for us at this meeting is to somewhat support and advocate for the ongoing investment funding of um, Te Waka as Waikato's Economic Development Agency. And the reason why we're here and we do so very boldly um, is because we thank you for the opportunity, is because we see that the Waikato Regional Economic Agency has been of great support to our work in actually advancing Pacifica economic development in this region. Um, in doing so, uh, we've been able to engage with central gov government, namely the Ministry of Pacific Peoples, who actually see the value of our um, partnership, working relationship with um, Tiwaka. And in saying that, more recently, we've been pleased to be able to provide um, a narrative which hasn't been provided before historically in this region or any other region across New Zealand, which tells um, the story of how well our businesses are doing and faring in this region. And it's this data that's been of increased value for the Ministry of Pacific Peoples to take into account um, to allow for ongoing funding to come into this region, not only for the Waikato Pacific Business Network, but for other Pacifica entities that have a heart towards advancing socio-economic development. Um, we've also found that um, it has been of ease for us to uh, work with an organisation that has a very co coordinated approach um, for our engagement with the councils. 
and also with other economic development agencies in the region. So we've been really fortunate to be able to sit in on meetings and be at the table for decision making um, with other economic development agencies in the region. We've also been really fortunate to work with WRC in regards to social procurement and how our Pacifica businesses um, can actually work better and more effectively to um, get on that ladder. We've worked with Hamilton City Council as part of the Manu Moana um, group, which is working with our Pacific public sector leads who are working currently in this region. And we're also working out in South Waikato with Tokoroa, uh, but also we've worked with Waikato District Council again with its procurement um, space and also looking at how we can advance economic development for our Pacifica communities um, in North and South Waikato. Um, we've only been here for two years plus. We feel that we've actually um, had capability uplift um, as a result of our working relationship with Tiwaka. I think that's probably all I have to say, um, but um, I guess once again, is that um, we thank you for your LTP um, that has come out. Um, it's of great interest to the Waikato Pacific Business Network. We've actually allowed um, for many of our Pacifica businesses to also review it and um, have a voice in it at their own choice, that is. Um, but we also look forward to working with um, WC going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Mar. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies, for coming in and presenting uh, in person. Do you find, um, is, is Tawaka for you, is it more support in the networking side of things or is there funding avenues? Just interested to see how your communities found that, that, that type of work. Is it, is it in funding? Is it in networking? You know, the, the priorities, basically, that you're getting out of your association. With. I'm going to say it's primarily to do with market intelligence. And I think in the ability for Tawaka to work with the Waikato Pacific Business Network to accommodate our objectives I and mean, what we're wanting to do, and also allowing um, our organisation to work with Tawaka to contribute to their um, outcomes also. Um, it's not primarily to do with funding. Um, but we've actually really appreciated um, the ability to partner, um, the ability to um, work towards developing an MOU with Tuaka so that we can actually work together um, to ensure that we have mutual goals and benefits for both organisations, but more so for Waikato as a whole. Having your voice and put it into that process. Absolutely, having our voice, but also having the credibility I'm going to say as um, a Pacific entity, having the credibility to have your regional economic development agency working in partnership with you at the table at government and, at, and actually with um, many other key stakeholders that we engage with, it actually provides our entity credibility and it gives us confidence to go out and actually speak what we need to speak about. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Warren. Councillor Nibon. Thank you, Surya and Rachel. Um, that, that was a really interesting answer, that, mm. that perspective, mm. so thank you. I'm just curious, um, once the RDF um, funding runs out, any, do you have any thoughts on what a long-term funding source could look like, by rating, targeted rating, investment fund returns sort of thing? For Tuaka? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. From, from the regional councils. Oh, from the regional council. Well, I would think you have enough um, intelligent people to provide that answer for you. Um, <laughs> but, um, well, I think, you know, to because I'm familiar with other economic development agencies that are currently operating across the country, I'm familiar with the um, economic development agency in Hastings that currently partner with um, um, their local um, business entity, the Chamber, but I think there's different avenues, but I think it is the role of Waikato, I think it's the role of a regional council to support um, a regional entity that speaks on behalf of the whole. And there are so many different avenues and I've seen different models that are working successfully across the country. And uh, many would say it is very much required that the business community need to get buy-in. And I think there is ample opportunity for that to happen here in the Waikato region. Um, and because, so therefore, I, I believe the Waikato Regional Council has a plan in place 
they could actually execute it. And um, I think a lot of it will have to do with um, funds that would contribute to assisting WRC in achieving its economic um, development goals for the region. I hope that's answered your question, Stuart. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Nicol. Kia ora, Surya and um, um, Rachel. Uh, Mike, I've got two small questions. That's, yep, it should be all right. Then um, one was, we've been challenged in a few submissions about Waikato Regional Councils who lack in the social infrastructure of the region. Um, and there, I'm very mindful of organisations going around to lots of territorial authorities asking for a little bit of money versus the idea of the regional council funding such as Te Waka. Um, I was wondering if you had a view on uh, Waikato Regional Council funding other regional entities uh, and the appropriateness of that compared to what's currently in place. Um, and the second question was how you find your work with the economic development sections of the territorial authority. If I can go to the second question, um, our work uh, with the regional, um, various regional territorial um, agencies have been very positive. And I'm going to say that because it's Tawaka that's actually allowed us to come together, to sit around the table and have, have a conversation, but also work towards a cohesive, collaborative approach to how we deliver economic development in the region. Um, and in, in, in answering your first question, um, in regards to ongoing funding like or operational funding for regional entities, this is a lot out there. Like the uh, community Waikato were here earlier. Uh, these creative Waikato were here yesterday, so forth. Just wondering if you had any thoughts on uh, the funding of regional council for those mm -hmm. types of things to contribute versus them having to go to each territorial authority. It's more of a hypothetical, I realise. Yeah. Um, I'm a believer that um, funding that is actually um, t um, tagged to a specific um, specific regional activity, um, they should be able to deliver upon that. I, I'm going to actually say that there's probably not enough funding that's actually being tagged for regional economic development um, for a Waikato Regional Economic Development Agency. Um, You've seen You're, a lot bigger EDAs around the country, haven't you? <laughs> I believe there are a lot more EDAs that are being um, um, funded appropriately to deliver what they need to deliver upon, especially in this current economic environment that we um, are currently working through. And I go back to the point of infrastructure is a huge, um, will be a huge project here, um, infrastructure in the Waikato, so yes. Thank you for those. All right, I'll go to Councillor Dunbar-Smith, and if you can uh, wrap up, that would be great. Yeah, so it, I'm going to wrap up, but I had a quick question about the social procurement stuff that we're dealing with you. Did you just want to elaborate that for literally 10 seconds, because we're not allowed to speak too much longer than that, but um, the, it seemed an important follow-on from that current question. Yeah, really um, really quickly, I'm going to actually um, say it for what it is. Our experience, and I want, we worked really well with WRC about a year and a half ago, doing um, a first time ever meeting with our Pacifica businesses, um, with um, Te Waka, and also um, your leads on procurement. Um, to this day, we are still waiting um, to hear back about what are the next steps. Um, okay. Our response has been from um, WRC is um, we are still working on it. Um, we patiently await that outcome, but we will continue to engage with your team. It's very important for our businesses um, to be able to engage in the procurement processes um, with our council, local councils. It's very useful to hear. And thank, um, you. thank you very much for uh, attending. The Pacific community is obviously um, important here, both here and in um, South Waikato. So, um, thank you for coming and presenting. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank all. you, Rachel. Okay. Thank you, Surya. Much thank appreciated. You. All right. Look at us bang on time all of a sudden. Fantastic. Okay, we have our next presenter is Te Kopo, or Kopa King. Te Kopa King. Ta all right, uh, councillors, this is page 401 of your agenda. So I've got five minutes for you. Uh, you'll see the clock on the screen. At four, you'll hear the bell. 
and and allow time for engagement with counselors if you would like to within that five minutes. Over to you. Right, good day, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Tikopa Kang. I'm from Hamilton, from Waikato. I'm from a lot of places. I fuck up it's even to the South Island. So um, and a lot of waka as well. Um, so my submission, I um. I agreed to kind of like um, I made a wrong mistake. Well, not a mistake, but I actually looked at Tewaka as something different, not as an economic yeah. development growth tool for um for businesses and you know, cultural businesses to grow. And um, although the funding is running out, I do believe that there are some reduces that you know should be. I agree with that part. That reduces need to be made. And that uh, um, it might be <clears throat> a, a good idea to maybe look at and review some of those economic development businesses, how they're going, and review whether or not it's best to to continue funding them if their um, development is you know reached to a le level or stage where they're doing okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, so in your submission, you selected option two, which is council does not continue to fund Tawaka. Yeah. Are you? Uh, is that your? That's your position, or? Well, yes and no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, um, like what I just finished saying that, right there, there might be still some, some and places in Tawaka that need funding. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the potential to make something really good. So then they wouldn't need the funding anymore. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So mm -hmm. uh, that's what I mean. So I was just looking at it actually just recently, like just now thinking, what the hell did I agree to? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for um, uh, for coming and, and speaking to the submission and and uh, giving us a little bit more insight into, into what was behind your thoughts on that. So thank you for that. I've got Councillor Smith. Yeah, and just to add to that, look, it takes courage for a person to come in mm. and say, I might have got this wrong a little bit. Mm. So I take my hat off to you to actually fronting up rather than just not coming uh, and clarifying it. So really well done on your part. It takes courage to do something like what you've just done. So and look, we really appreciate you coming in and telling us your piece. So. I did add a little something else in there, Please? sorry. Um, yes, go ahead. About the mana whakahono arohi agreements. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. think that's something that you guys need to work on with our iwi mm -hmm. and Waikato and the marae as well. Like if you're doing developments in, in around arohi, mm -hmm. that you speak to the marae and, and their hapu that are from specific places in, in Waikato that aren't there anymore, but they're traditionally from there that are in marae located around. That's Great. one thing I really want you guys to work on. Thank you for that. Any other questions? No? I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for the for putting in a submission and thank you for coming along today and and helping us to to understand uh, a bit a bit more fully uh, some of the issues you wanted to raise with Waikato Regional Council. Okay. Um so I mentioned I mentioned something else about um I think it was funding restoration projects, ne? Yeah, so I've um, I created a restoration project on pretty much nothing. Um just on my own out of my own pocket, working full time, um, just of my passion. You know, I created something really good to help the people in Aro here recognize that there's something significant here that is a tonga to be, you know to be taken care of and looked at because of the significance of our history mm. um, and the unity of us being not only kind of um, Pākehā, but, you know, Māori together with Pākehā. Mm. There's a lot of history history there. So, um, but that might be, I think, maybe something you guys might need to look into where we might need a lot of resources, but it doesn't mean that we need the funding. Does it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys might already have the resources, so all we need to do is just apply, apply for that mm. instead of having to, to fork out the funding that is needed for other places. When you say resources, can you give me an idea? What like sort tools, of resources? tools, plants, um, safety equipment, um, signages and things, things, like, things like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So I you know it costs a lot of things, but if there's the resources that are there, and if we have a plan and a proposal for that, the Waikato Regional Council could get it done. I mean, if we have the evidence, you know, and everything, and that suits. Thank you for that. Yeah, Councilor Clarkson. Kupa, uh, thank you for that last point. That's a very critically important point. And in fact, some of the aspects of the way we're delivering Natural Heritage Fund, we are looking at it as in terms of how we can be more effective at getting the equipment, you know, the tools, the plants, all of the sort of bits and pieces you need to do the project and using some of those um, hubs, you know, the existing hubs, uh, Predator Free hubs and some of the other hubs that we already have functioning. We, what all you would be doing is going directly to them and making a request. And we have some of these, this equipment, some of this, um, the tools for pest control or whatever it is. You make a really good point. Any, it's not necessarily about needing funding per se. It's just access to the right equipment. That's, Thank yeah, you for that. that. Right, the yeah. right equipment. And um, another thing I wanted to bring up is um, our, um, our communication. You know, the dialogue that we have, yeah. you know, that needs to be kind of... Yeah, so um, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap it up at that point. I think, look, we, we, we do appreciate you coming in, making those points, and, of course, we will take them into consideration in our deliberations. So thank you once again for your presentation. Thank you. Yummy. Kia ora. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our next presenter is not... Here, I don't believe. All right. Okay. So we might uh, go. Watch those screens. But um, Fiona, the, we've got um, to walk us scheduled before. So, um, kia ora, Tracy. Just uh, we've just got uh, a couple of presenters before uh, Waikato screens. So, if Tawaka is ready early, all right. So we have um, welcome Fiona, welcome Rosie. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for the submission that you've you've put in on behalf of Tawaka. We've allowed 10 minutes for your presentation. Uh, you'll see the clock on the screen, the bell at nine minutes. Uh, feel free to allow time within that 10 minutes to engage with councillors. Kia ora koutou. As you know, my name is Fiona Carrick and I'm the Chief Executive of Tawaka, the Waikato's Regional Economic Development Agency. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And with me is Rosie Sprague, our, our General Manager of Economic Development. Now, firstly, um, we'd like to address the proposal to discontinue the Regional Development Fund. Tawaka firmly believes in option two for the Council to continue to operate the Regional Development Fund. The fund was created to enable investment in regionally significant projects with economic outcomes achieved in a way that also enhances environmental sustainability. So that that's, is something that is important for the region and disestablishing this fund and re reallocating those funds will restrict our region's ability to take up future opportunities in this space. We know, and we all do in this room, it's clear from the current funding discussions at a national and local level that no government, central or local, can do it all for us. And our ability to co-invest through funds such as the RDF and private um, investment will prove pivotal in the future. The second point we'd like to address is, quite obviously, the proposed continuation of funding for Te Waka. We support the proposed allocation of 750,000 per annum to Te Waka, and we emphasise the importance of sustained support for economic development beyond this time frame. Economic development requires consistent investment and commitment to make a tangible difference. We see this at a national level and at a global level. By investing in economic development now, we are securing a brighter future for the generations to come that you've not long heard from. This long-term perspective is crucial in shaping thriving communities and modern infrastructure that provides the optionality for the future. The LTP that we are looking at right here and now 
has a 10-year lens. Economic development is a long-term play too. The value creation that economic development teams are a part of is setting up the areas that in 5, 10, 15 and 50 years will provide jobs for our children, rangatahi and grandchildren. And from that, the fabric of thriving, connected communities and modern public services and infrastructure will be crafted. Taking a short-term approach to funding regional economic development compromises the function's effectiveness. While we appreciate the proposed funding available, particularly given the wider constraints and demands on local government budgets, it is important to note that Tawaka is the lowest funded economic development agency in New Zealand, with the smallest number of employees supporting the fourth largest regional economy in the nation. During the last long-term planning cycle of the councils, Tawaka presented a plan to the region's 11 mayors to modestly scale up its activities to meet growing expect expectations. That proposal was rejected, so Tawaka has operated on a limited basis for the last three years. Despite this, Tawaka has met the accountability criteria set by the councils at a regional level. For example, the strategy is regional, the economic priorities are regional, the delivery is regional. Some examples are the Regional Strategic Partnership Fund, 17.4 million invested in the region across the year at specific regional level projects. So for example, in Reparoa, in South Waikato, in Thames Coromandel, our work is regional. We provide bespoke regional intelligence, as you've heard from some of our stakeholders today, and that provides informed decision makings for not just decision making, not just for investment of funding, but investment of development. The Freight Action Plan was the Bay of Plenty Waikato Freight Action Plan. Our workforce development work in Hauraki and Waitomo, again, delivery at that sub-regional level. Whilst our office may be physically located in Kirikiriroa, our impact, our strategy and our delivery is regional. We believe it's critical to ensure that there is a strong licence to operate via a collective mandate and regionally focused economic development. That, that mandate needs to come from business, iwi and the local government. All three stakeholder groups have a critical role to play in addressing our region's needs and a shared mandate is important. You've heard more from other uh, submitters with regard to the importance of a coherent, single, united position and a strong regional voice. We know, and as do we all, central government expects a coherent, united, regional voice. This expectation is going nowhere. Tawaka has actively championed a regional partnership approach, underpinned by a belief that there is power in collaboration and that achieving operating synergies is essential in a, fun, in a funding constrained environment. Tawaka has led serious conversations across many regional organisations with regard to the opportunity to bring together organisations. The point now is to understand how that change can actually happen. In conclusion, the Waikato region has immense opportunity and very real needs. We have a government looking to support economic development by requiring a strong regionalised approach. It's never been more important to develop a clear collective view on what regional, what regional economic development could deliver. It is critical that we all set the right foundations for investment into our region from industry and enterprises with the will and means to shape the region we want for ourselves and for region and for generations after ours. Thanks. I will leave it there. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, I value what the community asks of councillors. So you may or may not know that from the response of our questionnaire submission process, 68% of the respondents have said to cease funding for to, to Walker. So. Can I ask you to ponder this question and, and if you can, if you're prepared to answer it, how can you get, well, can you give me an answer that I can go to 
the ratepayers that I represent uh, within the, my uh, um, constituency and the wider region, and uh, as we all represent the region, that we should go against the 68% of respondents. So how, how can I tell them that we are going to go completely against a, a, a reasonable majority of people? And I accept the numbers, which are not much more than 300 out of a couple of hundred thousand potential voters, uh, ratepayers. So, but that's what councils deal with. That's that's the numbers that come back to us. So we've heard some good um, comments this morning, uh, and we've heard comments to the contrary in the previous two days. So please help me, Fiona, in understanding what I can say to my constituents. Should I go against that um, that um, that number? Thank you. Kia ora, Councillor Smith, and thank you for that question. We, of course, have noted the statistics in the in the submissions. Um, what I would refer to is the depth of what we do in creating long term conditions for your ratepayers. So the availability of jobs in the sub region where they are comes from a focus on the likes of renewable energy, which will benefit your particular constituency constituency significantly not so much will it benefit Hamilton. So when industry comes to an area, it's not always new industry or disruptive industry or new growth. It's not always clear that it is the work we, the mahi we have done, the connections we have made, our, our brand isn't necessarily alongside that. However, we are providing those opportunities and taking the priorities of that local constituency to a national level and an international level. So giving those priorities a voice to the investment markets nationally is how I, and internationally is how I would res respond to that. Any other questions? Uh, sorry, Councillor Graff. Um, <clears throat> hey, you were first. Yep, hi. Um, what type of businesses um, qualify to engage with Tiwaka? Example, do you approach business? Is there a criteria with revenue? Um, who's able to reach your services? There is no qualification um, process or, or gate. Uh, if any any business, enterprise, industry can engage with Tawaka, we have multiple channels. If we are not the appropriate facility, depending on what they are asking, we have the connections to direct them to the likes of Soda Inc, who run the um, Regional Business Partnership Program. If it's a tourism uh, question, if it's a private sector question, we can connect them in. But we're, we're not a um, user pay service per se, where there's a gateway for engagement. Councillor Strange. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Fiona, and um, for your presentation and the work that you have done um, for our region over the past, um, since you've joined Te Waka. Um, my question is, if funding was to stop, what sort of message would that send about our region to overseas investors, to central government, to business, to our local communities in this tough economic times? The key, the key criteria for investment is certainty and visibility of a pipeline. The region would be losing, would be sending a message of uncertainty and a degree of disunity. It would also be sending a message well, it would not be providing the view of a pipeline. If, if if there's a form of investment or a need, we hold the regional intelligence to be able to direct to that. It is what would be being lost. Please don't underestimate how much our voice is also around economic enablers, such as affordable housing, infrastructure, education. So it, you would be losing those two things. And just one further question, if I may. Um, having s current, sorry, my brain is <laughs> muddled today. Um, having sat on Future Proof um, since I've been on council, um, and appreciating that economic lens that you've recently put over the Future Proof spatial planning, noting that we are keen to do a wider regional spatial plan with an economic overlay. Losing Tiwaka would be um, what, 
no, in your words, sorry, um, what would that mean for the region outside of Future Proof? If, if we were to consider the models that are out there around urban growth partnerships or regional spatial um, strategies or, or plans, uh, they are often led and involve the economic development agency. They normally lead it. So I actually don't know what would happen, but there would be a significant challenge in terms of the economic zone lens because a lot of those strategies require engagement with your neighbours as well. All right, I've got Councillor Cookson and Councillor Clarkson. Can we be very quick? Councillor uh, Cookson. Thank you. Um, I think you've already heard my question already once today. But uh, I think um, my the TAs that I represent are not against you, but they want better representation and understanding what, what you're doing for them. If we fund it in the future, that definitely has to come out of what you, the benefit they're receiving. Otherwise, you know, and that, I've actually heard that from five TAs now. Um, uh, uh, what was uh, uh, King Pantry yesterday as well said that, so that's five. So I'm not saying it's, there's got to be better understanding of what you're doing for them, the representation. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be a hard sell. So that's what I'm just going to say. Thank you. Councillor Clarkson. Um, yesterday we heard about Waikato and Hamilton Tourism and mm. the fact that they had eight staff. Mm. And I'm wondering what are your what are your connections with them and what do you see the possibilities of being of closer relationship with them? Because I understood from their presentation that they were pretty well entirely focused on what we would call tourism economic development. So with regard to our regional economic priorities, and when I say our, they are the regions, tourism is one of six pillars. We work across the other five and focus in on three. Uh, we work alongside Hamilton Waikato Tourism with regard to a number of um, event attraction opportunities, whether they come to us or vice versa, um, conference opportunities, but also giving economic information and intelligence around um, spend, discretionary spend available, GDP, et cetera. With regard, obviously, we've been watching submissions closely. With regard to yesterday's submission, we have had multiple conversations with governance, with um, Hamilton, or sorry, regional airport, RAL, um, with the Hamilton Waikato Tourism Board itself. Uh, and have had ongoing conversations for two and a half years about the opportunities to work closely, more closely, or consider some form of operational efficiency across the two organisations. It has got to be um, understood, though, and quantified that the region, the region, not the regional council, has chosen out of six industries to invest 1.4 million over three years for that particular industry. Now, I'm not saying it shouldn't, but that gives you some quantification in comparison to how other regions are investing across multiple sectors. Great, thank you very much. I need to bring that to a close. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Rosie. Appreciate your submission and appreciate your time spent with us today so that we could understand to a greater degree. All right. We've got Waikato Screens, happy to come forward. It's a little bit early, but or when I'm just going to test with counselors. Do we need a stretch break or we keep going? Okay. Go to. All right. I know we have uh, Tracy Hampton online, and we have Aaron and Esme. Sorry, it's my <laughs> Got I even All right, so we've got uh, 10 minutes on the clock. You've probably heard the drill. Bell at nine. Off you go. Kia ora, Pamela, and Tina Kwe. Um, councillors and staff. I'm Erin, I'm representing Waikato Screen today, and I have Tracy Hampton, my colleague online, and I have Esme McKenzie-Milton, uh, one of our advisors next to me. 
I'd like to get to thank Council for giving us the opportunity uh, to provide feedback on the Waikato Regional Council long-term plan. In this current eco economic climate, I understand it's hard times, and we see the trend of councils pulling back from investing in economic development. Our concern is this is short-term gain with inevitable negative long-term outcomes. This will disadvantage our region's businesses and take money away from our regional economy. I'm here today as Waikato Screen is not included in your budget and the Regional Development Fund, which gave us our opportunity to have a film office, is under review. We received the first tranche of the Regional Development Fund a year ago and I would like to share with you today what we do, the services we provide um, and the money that has been put into a wide range of businesses and people in our district. Um, although there is a current recession, the film industry is booming. I could pop up my next slide. Who we are and what we do, and we'll flick quickly to the next one. Waikato Screen is a regional film office. We are not for profit. We support and service the screen sector within our region from an, uh, from an economic development perspective. This is not to be mistaken for entertainment. On the tools, oh, have we, sorry, have we skipped a slide? Is there one with people? No, there's not, there's a slide missing. Okay, sorry, that's fine. Um, on the tools, we have uh, four of us, which is myself, Tracy, who is with me online, uh, Jack Barry and uh, Talent Development, and uh, Matt Hicks. Um, we are supported by in kind by a prominent and well-known advisory board that are experts in our field, um, and they are not there in picture. <laughs> but I will skip to the next, just to where we are now. Um, our services include attraction and marketing our region for potential film locations. We facilitate relationships with national and international film industry, government, key stakeholders in the Waikato. We connect productions to our local businesses to stimulate economic growth. We assist connecting productions to iwi, hapu and local communities to ensure cultural sites of significant are managed with care and local community are informed to have minimal impact. We host workshops to upskill our people to be job ready and we connect these people to paid work. And as a byproduct of our work, tourism increases and opportunities are provided like Hobbiton. Why we have a film office? The international film industry spends on average $3.3 billion annually in our country. Auckland alone boasted a $1.5 billion income last year. With such pro close proximity, the Waikato cannot afford to miss out on being a part of this thriving industry. This is new money injected into our regional economy with many productions coming from outside our region and outside our country. Waikato's screen provides the necessary resources, information and connect connections to attract and support productions in our region to a global market ripe with opportunity. With the hard work of Waikato Screen, we have already grown our piece of this lucrative pie. So what is this industry worth to us? Next, next, that's great, thank you. This slide is a breakdown of our film expenditure. For example, a medium-sized feature film average a budget of $125,000 per day, and a simple commercial budget is not much less than that. There are TV, streaming, documentaries, music videos, and much more, and they are all spending. While 40% of the budget is screen product, production specific, 60% is spent on our local businesses. The spend is far, as far, and, far and wide as you can see. This breakdown shows you, for example, 8.9 of production spend goes into travel and transport, and 8.2 in construction. This is our Ubers, taxis, rentals, builders, suppliers, and hire businesses. There is huge money in this business. What I can tell you is there are 11 other film offices out there, and if it isn't being spent in the Waikato, it's being spent somewhere else. Last year our first fully, was our first year as a fully funded organisation and we had 39 inquiries and I'll share with you our top five productions. 
we supported a Coromandel production which had an estimated spend of 150000 per day for around 14 days, equating to over $2 million estimated spend, with over 400 people involved in the production, including many locals as warriors. The Waikato District, Beyond Goodbye, a Japanese Netflix series, doubled Raglan as Hawaii. Over 425000 went into Raglan and Hamilton communities. This medium-sized production spent on a range of businesses, including cafes and restaurants, security, traffic, and they engaged with community and paid for the locations and the services of rugby club, surf lifesaving, iwi and hapu, and they employed over 100 locals during their visit. The Raglan Business Chamber, eager to host more filming, collectively has written a letter of support, which you have. Both these productions had great community involvement and much needed economic relief after COVID and bad weather. A massive international production was in Huntley and Chair Pamela Storey was able to visit and view the mammoth social, cultural and financial impact. This production initially was going to import everything and everyone from Auckland. Waikato Screen, along with the service we provided, strongly encouraged the production to spend locally, which resulted in crew being accommodated at Tainui Hotels, Catering supplies were purchased locally, there was neighbourhood barbecues, vouchers were given out, and a minimum of 150000 was in, was was spent in over three days. Waitomo hosted a significant inter, international documentary where I personally convinced the producer to choose Waitomo over Auckland. This had an approximate $75,000 to $100,000 spend. And last but not least, the gone is back after previously boasting a million spend last season. This gave exposure to our, of our beautiful region to Ireland. And regarding the spend, ask the local bar and restaurant owner, the Duck and Cover, how many film guests they are expecting tonight. So we deliver. In our first year, we've delivered all we said we would, and we fulfilled all of our agreements and laid the groundwork for, su for success. We have actively facilitated many productions in the Waikato uh, in the Waikato region. We have increased filming in our area, established a robust industry crew directory of over 100 prof professionals. We've created a regional image gallery and provide regular updates through newsletters and social media. We've represented our region on mo in multiple forums and we even delivered a stunning showreel early. This isn't about potential, it's about proven results and we've de demonstrated our ability to deliver tangible economic returns for our, for our region. We've conducted successful filmmaking workshops, forged meaningful collaborations, and we're on the verge of launching our website. And the pictures, if you pop to the next slide, I can even show you, we had a Pam Caval youth workshop um, and a dignitary visit, which we took 10 children from five different schools on set. All of this would not be possible without the generous funding from councils. Our funding is split 50% from the Regional Council Regional Development Fund, our largest sponsor. 25% of our budget is shared among nine territorial authorities, and we try to obtain the remaining 25% through community and industry grants. We keep our budget aligned to our purpose. We have no shareholder payouts, no physical office overheads, our advisory board is voluntary, and we keep our budget skinny. We've demonstrated our, just flip to the next slide, please. We have demonstrated our ability to, live, to deliver tangible economic returns. Um, through our collaborations, the, the Waikato is becoming a hot commodity for locations. We've worked for every territory in our region and assisted delivering millions. We have two more years support from the Regional Develop Development Fund. We ask you to consider for the f uh, our future to support economic development through Waikato Screen in only year three of your budget and to consider the Regional Development Fund be used for this purpose or to be used for the purpose of regional development. This is our region and we, uh, this is our region that we, uh, this is so our region can keep can keep continuing to reward to reap the rewards from what we have been delivering. Um, I ask you to think of the future, not just the now, for the long term benefits. Thank you.
Thank you very much. We probably have time for a one question or a wrap up or go ahead, Stu. Right, no, hi, thanks for your submission. Just curious what your long term thoughts are in terms of operational funding. Obviously, the regional development fund, the, the key word there is development, hey? um, and just from an operational perspective, yeah. It's probably quite similar to Tiwaka. You know, it's an economic development agency specific to film, so we would probably need to go to our local councils or council to try and obtain that funding. We look at also in our year three of uh, permitting for filming, um, but that would be once we have, make sure all, if we have a solid future before we implement that. What does that mean, yeah? So they'll be applying through for, for through Film App. It's rolling out through the country. So if you want to permit in a public place, you actually have to apply through the council for permitting, and it, it's a paid activity. So there will be some income from that. And I can speak to add to that as well. Can you hear me? Sure. Aaron? Yes. Thanks, Tracy. Right. Yeah, additionally, um, there's a good, uh, there's um, great community grants and industry grants. There's a significant ones that we've written to for this year that we'll hear in July and August, which um, at your office will receive a substantial report summary of our year um, as part of our reporting process. And that um, will be sent out next week once Connie's just seen it and then sends it amongst your team and there's um there's some really other fantastic um funding that we've written to of um a part of it is our community and advanced education and upskilling our crews and things and so there's a really good amount of strong support that we can gain from our industry um, as a screen sector plus um relying on council for them always being able to see the uh, return that they get on their investment Uh, Councillor Dunbar-Smith. Um, yeah, just wanted to thank you for your submission, but also 25% um, of the income comes from the TAs. What kind of feedback have you been getting from them or what are their proposals so far? Are they looking to reduce funding or what's what's happening? It depends on the TA and what value it seems to have been adding to the area. So um, and some areas that are extremely tight with funding and have been quite verbal about it, they have said it will be really difficult moving into this next LTP. So we are waiting to hear the main feedback, but I would say 50% of the TAs are supportive of Waikato Screen and continuing their funding for us. Um, so thank you for a very detailed presentation. Um, it's very professional and um, Thank you for appearing before us. Yes. Great. Hey, thank you very much. Um, uh, appreciate your your time and your energy and and the uh, contents of your submission for our consideration. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Ed, Esme. Thank you. All right. Our um, Go Eco presenters, I don't believe, have arrived online yet, but we do have uh, Eileen from the Guardians of Paku Bay, who's missing off of the run sheet. Do we have that in our the page number? Um, you want to, uh, if you're ready, uh, we do have time right now, and I, I can bring you forward. Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Eileen Bisley, and um, I am on the committee of the Guardians of Paku Bay, um, Tairua. And just to tell you something about us, we've been working for about 22 years to help protect the Tairua Harbour and its surrounds. So Paku Bay is at the end of the harbour. Um, there's a road and then the ocean beach between Paku Bay and the ocean. Um, so that's where we're situated. And one of our roles is to review the um, WRC monthly water quality testing, which is been taken throughout the year and in the Tairua Harbour and um, Tony Jacobs is very proactive with um, the water quality testing. We review the weekly results taken in the nearby marina and nearby surrounds by the Tairua Marine Limited throughout the year. 
So what we're really concerned about is the continuing trend of the highly contaminated water entering our harbour. And it seems to be coming from Graham Stream. And the source testing suggests that the cause was from avian or ruminant source. Um, there's very little in the way of bird flocks and only the occasional dozen or so cattle in Graham's Creek through which the stream flows, which is actually towards the back of the um, uh, Paku Bay area. Local knowledge suggests that the more likely source is caused by leaking water waste system from the large number of houses on the lower lying area along Ocean Beach Road, which are feeding into the public mains wastewater pipe running along through Graham's Creek. So a similar situation um, is causing the contamination of the stormwater flowing into the marina in the Paku Drive Marina Vale area, which is coming down from the Paku Hill. So the high levels of contamination have resulted in bathers at the popular Esplanade and Paku Beach is being exposed um, to quite serious health risks on occasion. There's been a sign posted at the upstream of Hornsby Road Causeway Bridge <clears throat> saying do not enter the water and that's been there for the last two years but there's been no further investigation um, two years on. So we're actually asking WRC if you could fund a proper investigation in conjunction with TCDC to find out the true cause of this serious pollution and to fix it for us because posting a sort of a do not enter the water sign is not really a solution. We also ask that more resources and fundings will be allocated to the WRC team at Wittianga to enable all the good work that they carry out in the Tyro catchment area to be increased to give more protection to our harbour. We ask WRC to provide more funding and resources to work with farmers and the farmers in our catchment and Fonterra um, to complete all the farm environment management plans and accelerate their impl implementation. I thank you um, for the opportunity to submit. Just in relation to you, your, your last point about working with uh, farmers, did you see in our LTP our proposals around the primary industry? Yes, and we do. Um, we actually do support um, the rural compliance and support, um, which would increase the um, primary industry rate to, I think, it's 376 um, per property, 20 hectares and more. So we do support that. We got additional. Oh, uh, Councillor Marr. Very much. That, thanks for your submission today. Um, have you presented to TCDC's LTP? No, I haven't. And that's uh, just going back to your first point and the and the water um, conditions and that. I know that TCDC personally have had a, a uh, an officer um, spend fourteen days going around that um, Marina Vale, the um, Pepe Stream, all the. All that, so they must have some up to date information on that. That only took place probably about six weeks ago. Okay. Wayne Price went around and did it, did, uh, checking all the manholes, doing all the stormwater stuff, and everything like that. Right. So I, I would suggest that that's the that's the place to to um, follow up on on that, right. that water testing and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Nebone. Oh no, I was just curious as to whether there was any any indicators of what might be causing this? Because it seems a little bit odd that that this tiny amount of farmland would be causing this sort of um, symptoms you're talking about. Yeah, so as you say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, that's a point for the geese. But... Any other questions? There's only a dozen, as I said, there's only a dozen or so. Yeah. All right. Mikhail, would you like to, or Councillor Downard, would you like to thank our presenter? Yeah, just thanks very much for presenting in front of Council today. Thank um, you. And taking the time to travel and. Right
Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, councillors, just uh, to note that that submission uh, was on page 769 of the agenda pack, if you are looking to see, have a look at that. Okay. Sir? All right, councillors, we've got, um, now I know this is the last uh, of our external count, uh, submitters on our run sheet. We are slotting in the Rangatahi voices. They had difficulty with the technology getting through this morning. They were, remember, they were our first up. So we'll be going to GoEco first, and then we'll bring in Rangatahi voices after that. And then we'll go on to the CE submission after. Well, we'll take a break, I think, after that. <laughs> OK, so online we've got Joe Wrigley with GoEco. I, I don't see Kelly online. Joe, is she joining us as well? Uh, no, it was always going to be me. Sorry about that. All um, you, all <laughs> you. So, so Joe, we've got 10 minutes for your organization's uh, submission presentation. Uh, so hopefully you can see the clock on the screen at nine minutes, we'll ring a bell. Uh, and if you would like to uh, allow engagement with counselors and points of clarification to be asked, then I need you to do that within the 10 minute window. All right. Yeah, all day, everybody. Uh, so, uh, greetings everybody. Uh, thank you for your time today. I am actually, they've put two five minute submissions together so that I can speak to both the Thriving Communities Collaboration and, uh, and GoEco submissions, which I intend to do in a timely way right now. Fantastic. So first up is the Thriving Communities Collaboration. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. The Thriving Communities Collaboration is a collaboration between the Waikato Wellbeing Project, Community Waikato, Creative Waikato, GoEco, and the HMS Trust, or the Resettlement Centre. Our combined submission represents the shared vision and aspirations of organisations who are working to build the capacity, capability and well-being of our local landscape. We represent projects, organizations, communities, and enterprises who make a significant contribution to a connected and resilient region. We trust that our perspective and experience is helpful as you make your important decisions. Our respective organizations have multiple touch points with communities across Waikato, and we acknowledge the huge role that you play as regional leadership organizations. We represent a significant economic contribution alongside social and environmental impact in regional communities through employment, enterprise and volunteer contributions to well-being through the underfunded and often unfunded within arts, environmental and social projects. Today, I want to restate our request that Waikato Regional Council commits to maintaining and increasing community funding to support organizations delivering positive outcomes for community, environment, creative and economic well-beings, especially during these times of increased need. We lose momentum when, we've, when funding is reduced or when funding stagnates. Our work is never done and our collaborative and intersecting goals are wasted if we do not work together. This region should be a food sovereign region. And indeed, before the devastation of the land wars, this region had the ability and capability to grow food for security and to trade the abundance with settlers and overseas as well. We implore you to collaborate with councils and communities to lead and implement a joint food strategy for Waikato. Our organisations are innovative, engaged with diverse communities and hundreds of stakeholder communities across the region. It makes sense to engage and fund services from regional capacity and capability organisations that are committed to growing regional resilience and wellbeing, enabling meaningful and reciprocal access and support for communities. In respect to the GoEco submission, 
Um, I'm hoping that you all know that we're a not-for-profit hub and that we've delivered capability and capacity building for community environmental aspirations for 30 years. We're a voice for the environment, a centre for learning and a catalyst for change. We work with businesses, farmers, community groups, Fano and hapu to realise shared aspirations for a resilient, sustainable future. Over the past three years, we've provided employment infrastructure and support to regional groups to help communities establish community-led projects for biodiversity and resilience. The Central Waikato Predator-Free Hub, the Bush to Burbs Project in Karapiro and Mauna Tauteri, the Basket in Thames and the Piako Waiho Catchment Trust, all of these projects and new trusts have employees and contribute to the resilience of this region. I do want to talk specifically about the Natural Heritage Fund and restate that we support an increase to $15 per household. We'd actually like more, but you know, I've got to start somewhere. In the last two years, we've had access to a small amount from this fund, not to pay wages or costs, simply to provide landowners with support for their work creating an extended predator-free buffer around part of Maungatauteri. Our role is to engage communities in protecting the overflow of wildlife from this sanctuary. We source funding and seek donations to support regional projects. Currently, we hold ministry deeds of funding to contribute to regional catchments and biodiversity. We believe that we have the ability to grow and support significant projects and the most significant constraint is the allocation of funding. The reallocation of the Regional Development Fund is of particular interest to us and we hope to be engaged in conversations around that distribution as a result of your consideration. Kia ora everybody, I'm happy to answer any questions. Have we got any questions for GoEco? Sure. Councillor Nicol. Mm -hmm. Thank you and uh, thank you Joe. Um, you've got one, two, three, four six entities to put in a submission together um, and to manage to, to, despite the fact this is quite diverse, pull out one key question, which is, um, well, request alongside the funding you've talked about, um, to lead and implement a joint food strategy. Could you give me a bit more detail as to why each of these entities that were part of this really hooked onto that compared to all the other categories that could have made their one request? So all of these entities are food. I think the simplest answer is food affects everybody. There isn't anybody who doesn't deserve food or isn't entitled to food. Food is the, the core of every meeting, every project, every whanau, every hapu, every action, everything we do. It's part of our culture, regardless of your cultural identity. Food is, in, is in essence, something that every family know somebody who is uh, struggling to access. We believe that in the region, um, um, all of the sectors have a role to play in that. And that it is something that is um, at the centre to everything that we do. Uh, so regardless of where you come from or how you identify or where you live, access to food is something that's top of the mind for every household. It's top of the mind for farmers, it's top of the mind for new um, new migrants, um, it's top of the mind for Māori, it's top of the mind for the arts community because, you know, all of these communities also have people who struggle to purchase food, but all of these communities have people who have knowledge about growing food. And we believe that Waikato has a leadership place in um, developing a food statement. Thank you. I don't see any lights on yet, so if I could just ask, and if, if we didn't do that, what's your concerns? in the food space? Our concern is that uh, the need for food uh, would um, continue to grow, that the misunderstandings of the role of farmers and food production in the community and in the region would continue to grow, that misinformation would cause um, strain and stress I'm in the communities. Stressed. You keep going, Joe. 
sorry. Oh, sorry. And that, and that you know, uh, the World Economic Forum has said that misinformation is our greatest enemy, shared enemy at this time. And we know that farmers and producers are feeling the strain um, for that um, and want to have a solid place in the provision of food uh, for Waikato communities. Thank you for that, Joe. Now you're a champion for farmers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for that, uh, Joe. I was just wondering if you wanted to uh, touch on some of your submission point, points in relation to regional transport. Well, we are, I'm a bit like we're waiting for the decision today, but we are strong advocates for regional transport and for the, um, the continuation of the idea of connecting the inland ports um, and the regional hubs um, in, in that golden triangle framework, we think that there's a, a place for regional transport, um, both uh, for workers and commuters, as well as for freight and business um, and tourism as well. We think that it is um, something that should be resourced in a much stronger way. It has a huge role in lowering regional admissions, but also in uh, decongestion and getting things to the places that they need to be. Great. Thank you for those points. Um, with that, can I get uh, Councillor Cookson, can I get you to um, thank our presenter? All the way from Warrensville, Councillor Cookson. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your time and um, all your um, effort in putting um, your submission together. And um, I'm sure that all the councillors here today have heard your passion and um, and uh, your dewey for the or, um, for your region. So thanks very much for that. Awesome. Thank you. Kia ora, everybody. Thanks, Joe. All right. Do we have Rangatahi voices online? If we've got Rangatahi, oh, we do. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, councillors, after we have this uh, presentation, then we will take a break before the CE uh, um, submission. Okay. Online, we have uh, Aria Hura. I'm not sure if I've said that right. Sorry. Um, Teruki. All right. We've allowed uh, 10 minutes for your submission. We do uh, have the materials in front of us. Uh, we'll ring the bell at nine minutes. I encourage you, if you would like to allow counselors opportunity to engage, uh, that you allow for that within those uh, the ten minute time slot. All right, okay. Off you go. Kapai, a tēnā tātou katoa. Kua ria hui o te ruki tō kuingua. I am the co-chair for Rangatahi Voices alongside with Rosalie Norton and Mitchell Jordan. Um, so I'll be representing on behalf of our group today, which is a combination of Rangatahi across um, the Waikato Regional Council, um, where we sit and meet every second week um, at Waikato Regional Council. Um, so our submission was based around three areas. Most of it was around the natural heritage rate, um, the economic funding and the public transport. Um, what we found is that our rangatahi met with um, councillors just to ensure that they had a further understanding of what was being um, circulated and what their imp input was re required on. Uh, what we found is that uh, the, the, there's a there's quite a range of diversity in amongst our rangatahi. Um, some are at high school, some are at are working, others at university. So the needs and their aspirations were quite varying. Um, but in terms of um, the topics of the natural heritage rate, what we found is that there was a strong um, need and desire towards improving outcomes for our tayo. Um, it was quite a robust, robust discussion, but our rangatahi um, Although uh, very keen um, Taiwan experts and warriors, they noted that they also couldn't quite meet the, um, depending on the demographic, couldn't quite meet the different rates. But it was agreed that 
increasing or staying at the current rate was our prefer preference. Um, in terms of public transport, what we found is that the needs again were very varying across the different regions. Uh, for those in Hamilton um, and across the room actually, it was unanimous that option one was our preference um, based on an indication of around the room and on our Zoom um, attendees. Um, for what we found is option two was not preferable at all, um, but that was the priority of our Tahi at the time. Um, moving on to regional economic funding, um, what we found is that for the indication of the room, the preference was to go through option one to continue it at this stage, um, as long as it's cost neutral um, and can use the funding from uh, potentially, potentially other regional development fundings um, just to balance it. Um, but yes, that was primarily the thoughts of the rangatahi at this stage. All right, thank you for that. Any questions from councillors? Uh, Councillor Clarkson. Oh, thank you for your presentation. I was just wondering, did you undertake any process where you recorded the different proportions of support for some of those options? Did you, you know you could have reported to us what the numbers were for how many people supported, you know, option one, two or three? Did you record that sort of information? Yes, we did in one of our documents um, for public transport. Um, it was, you know, we didn't collect the exact numbers, but of, uh, of our attendees, we had about 17 participating um, in our meeting at the time. And what we found is that for public transport, there was unanimous uh, for option one. For the other options of natural heritage, option one, increase for inflation was seven people. Option two, increase to $15 was six people. In option three, there was uh, no votes for that one. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I wanted to hear because I saw the debate in your document and I was just wondering whether you had that data and having that data is very useful. Thank you very much. Kapai, tēnā koe. Any other questions? Um, not a question, Pamela. Oh, but, sorry, uh, yes. Ano nei kei te mihi ki a koutou um, Aria Huia. Um, kare he pātai me Aho Whakaroke koutou, me pēwhea e rongo ai ngā mahi katoa te kauni he rā tā koutou reo. Ahakoa tēnei um, uh, pētihana i ngā mahi katoa no reira nei anō te mihi ki a koutou. Just thinking Aria Huia for presenting their views and inquiring of her how we can get their ongoing voice into our mahi um, because they exist to support us. Tēnā koutou, kia ora. Tēnā Have you got any thoughts for us on how we might uh, more actively engage with rangatahi voices? Well, Rangatahi Voices meets every second week at the Waikato Regional Council, um, and there's always an opportunity for councillors to meet with us or even any local groups that are interested in sharing their views or wanting to hear the views of Rangatahi. Um, but ultimately, if there are any questions that you have, that's the platform to get in touch with us. Um, we're across social media, but most importantly, we meet in the building every second week um, as a collective. And a lot of us are on, on Zoom for travelling from Te Kwiti, um, across the district to, to ensure that we can actually share aspirations amongst each other. I certainly uh, enjoyed attending the meeting where we discussed the contents of the long-term plan document and, and appreciate it. I, I, I didn't appreciate until I was there the spread of, uh, you know, the regional spread of your participants. Uh, so that was really good to see. I've got Councillor Cookson. Just it's more of a question for council. How many um, councils actually attend the, those meetings? Because I've never been asked. So yeah, that's what I mean. So I just want that's the question I'd like sure. council to answer. Thank you. Sure. I've I've attended. <laughs> They, they, I am in the building. Yeah, they're they're in the evening, um, but I think that uh, you raise a good point that there uh, we need to ensure that we're sharing those opportunities and that councillors are aware. Anything else? If not, thank you very much, um, Aria Huya. I appreciate your uh, attendance today. I appreciate your facilitation of Rangatahi Voices 
Uh, your chairmanship was easily seen on the evening that I attended, and and I appreciate the uh, the effort that you go to to ensure that those voices are heard uh, through our decision making processes. So, kia ora, and thank you for your time today. Kia ora, tēnā tata katoa. All right. Okay, councillors, we're going to take a wee break, eh? Sorry, do you want to? Oh, oh no, no, I'm just going to have a discussion with you. Oh, a discussion with me. Can I have a discussion with everyone too? <laughs> uh, I just just want to know how we're going to proceed with uh, the CE's presentation. Um, and maybe you're touching on that, Chris. So, yeah, thank you. Um, I think everybody needs a break. We have been sitting for quite some time. So I'm going to suggest we adjourn for 10 minutes. And That's just a note um, that I, sorry, lunch is yeah, out there. Lunch, but just a note that it did only come out yesterday afternoon yeah. and student have internet overnight to sure. read it either. So it'd just be nice to not rush it too much. For yeah. The presentation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can we do a, uh, can we'll adjourn for 20 minutes? So is, I, it a, is it for information or is it for deliberation? It's not, not for deliberation. No, it's just a purely information. Yeah. And, and yeah. Any, okay, yeah. thank you. It's a submission like any of the submissions we have heard over the last um, few days. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we will adjourn the meeting at 12.56 and we'll be back in 20 minutes. <laughs>